welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to upgrade my Acer Aspire 1 725 netbook with an SSD. This will increase the robustness of the device as well as making it boot faster, increasing overall system responsiveness and also boosting the battery life. While I'm going to be working on the Aspire 1 725, the techniques I show you can also be applied to any other modern netbook or laptop computer. The SSD I've chosen for my upgrade is this Samsung 128GB 830 series. This is currently available for a very good price and is a very good disk to use for upgrading a laptop or a netbook because not only do you get the SSD itself, and a spacer in case it's necessary to fit it in the case. We'll find out about that ourselves a bit later. But you also get some drivers and more significantly from Samsung, quite a nice package for managing your SSD and keeping it in best condition. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, you get this small adapter, which allows you to plug your SSD directly into a USB socket, which makes it very easy to clone your existing hard drive onto the SSD before you fit it in the computer. Cloning the SSD is indeed the first thing we need to do in making this upgrade, so that's what I'm going to start doing right now. OK, well here I am all set up to clone the hard disk that's currently inside the computer onto the SSD before we put it inside the case. What I've got here is the SSD itself, which is connected via the adapter I just showed you to a USB port on the machine. I've also got connected our USB port on the other side of the machine, this CD-ROM drive. It's connected by a very old IDE interface at the back, but it'll work perfectly well. Um, I'm going to use a program called Paragon Drive Copy to copy my disk from one to the other, what they call cloning. So when I now boot it up, what should happen is it will boot from the DVD and boot directly into Paragon itself. And now we're here. We've got on this screen, it shows us we have two disks on this computer. The disk at the top, basic disk zero, is the actual boot drive of the machine itself, currently with a 298 gigabyte capacity. And here's our SSD with nothing on it, 119 gigabyte capacity. What I'm now going to do is to go into the hard disk and copy hard disk. And I'm going to copy very carefully from basic disk um, zero to basic disk one. Little hesitation there, you've always got to make sure you get this thing right, if you don't you're kind of in, in trouble. Um, we will resize proportionately so everything fits exactly on the drive um, and we will also click this box at the bottom saying perform SID changing after disk copy so that the disk appears to Windows as if it's exactly the same disk. I'll now click OK Paragon will have a little think because there's various things going on in the background. There it is. And now all I have to do is to click the apply button to make all this happen. And that will then take a little bit of time. Um, it checks, of course, do I really want to apply these changes? Yes. If I got them wrong, it could be disastrous. But you'll see it's now started the disk copy process. You see initially a little bar going straight across the screen looking like it's going to be very, very fast. But of course it isn't. This will take some time and therefore I'll leave this thing to sit there copying the disks and I'll come back to you when the thing is completed and I've got a completely copied SSD ready to put into the computer. OK, with the cloning now finished and the disk disconnected from everything else, it's now time to fit it inside the computer. So we're going to turn over the Acer uh, itself and first of all, we need to remove the battery so there's no power in the machine when we're working on it. So we just flick aside this little catch. There we are, and the battery then just carefully comes out. Now, working on this is actually quite straightforward because it's got this panel on the bottom where most of the components are below, and I, I hope that'll give us immediate access to the disk. So I just need to remove this one screw and the base. Just take that out. And with that screw removed, all we need to do is, if we're lucky, just apply some pressure to push that panel forward and that panel will come out. And there we are, we can now see right inside the computer. 
and immediately you can see the hard disk is mounted here. So all we need to do is to go in and remove the screws on the mount, which should be nice and straightforward. In many netbooks in particular, it's extremely difficult to get into the disk. You have to take apart all sorts of bits of the machine, but here today this is being a very um, cooperative piece of equipment. Uh, is there any other mounting on that? It's just, just checking there, I don't think so. So it should just be that now the whole thing lifts up. No, it doesn't, and there must be something else. Oh yes, I see what it is. Uh, we've now got to just to pull back this mounting strip there, and then maybe that's not the case either. Um, does it slide back? It slides back, yes, that's what happens. It slides back like that and then we can just lift out the disk. And there we have the conventional um, hard drive which this machine is based on, which we're going to replace with the SSD. So you can see what we need to do is to remove the screws on the side. So I hope you can just see that there. We're going to take out, um, there we are, I can show you that. Take out these screws, one screw on that side, and then one screw, again hopefully you can see what I'm doing, one screw on the other. There we are. And that has removed this little mounting bracket, so we're ready for the SSD. If we then take the SSD, which is going to fit in like this, we'll just check that's going to be fine, I'm sure it is, but yes, that'll just be fitting under there. So we need to make sure what we do is we mount this on the top of the SSD. It looks like we won't need our, our plate for the extra width. And now we just need to put in these screws. It's always a pain starting them off, isn't it? Get in, you little swine. There we are. Oh. This is normally in a video where I do a cut and you wouldn't see me failing miserably to get the screw in, but there we are. Hopefully that'll start it off. Yeah, that's it. Go on. Wants to be my friend now. And indeed it is being my friend. And then there's another one. I've got to do that again. Oh dear. I hate fitting early screws. I'm doing this too early in the morning to get early screw, tiny screws in, but there we are. Hopefully that will be getting in there. There we are. And now all we need to do is to drop the disc in. It just clicks under there. And we have to make sure we go back far enough to get it under that little, those little notches. It's one of those Swines of a thing. Oh, I see. It has to go backwards and then forwards. There we are. It goes in there and then pushes into the mount. Aha! And we now have the SSD mounted in the computer. So all we need to do is to put back in the screws. That should hold that in place. Yes, I've got yet another screw to get to work. There we are. There's one. And finally, there's, yes, you guessed it, another one. That goes in there. And that was quite a quick real-time exchange of the hard disk for the SSD. And the colour even matches more nicely now, doesn't it? So finally, I just need to put the case back on. So we take that and drop it over the top and it just pushes back into place. That fitted remarkably easily. This is going very well other than that screw for fitting the, the hard disk. We just put back in a tiny little screw at the front, which we'll just screw in there and keep the case secure. It's all back in place. And finally, we need to fit the battery. And that fits back in. There's a very good click on the battery on this uh, Aspire one. And finally, 
If we turn it over again, we have, there you are, a finished computer. Right, so the final thing to do is, of course, to boot this machine up and see whether I've broken it entirely or whether there's still something working inside it. Oh, we've got a, got a post screen, that's going to be good. Um, Windows sometimes is a little bit unhappy when you've switched to disk, even when you've cloned it, it's effectively you've ripped out the heart of the machine and put another one back, which you're trying to tell it to copy. Having said that, it seems to be going pretty well at the moment, so um, I'll cross my fingers. And it seems to uh, be showing all the signs of doing a perfectly normal Windows boot. Um, it's sometimes nice to see the uh, Windows welcome word. We see so much of it, but yeah, there it is. And um, yes, it seems to have booted. How nice it is to hear the Windows chime just now and then. Not always, but, but now and then. Um, looking at what it's done with the disks, the only thing that looks slightly strange is that we've got our cloned C drive, our system drive, but it's also brought up a D drive, PD or PQ service. Now that's actually the recovery partition which was hidden on the drive before. In fact, I'm probably going to remove the um, recovery partition. It's only a 128 gigabyte drive after all. And of course, if my machine does go wrong now, all I have to do is to plug um, in the previous physical hard disk and mirror it back to the SSD. So that I'm sure will disappear fairly soon. And that will leave me, as you can see, um, with I've got, what, 75 gigabyte free roughly on C, and I'll have them um, getting on for 80 gigabytes of free space on this with Windows installed and running and with a little bit of software as I've got on the machine. Okay, so everything is, is basically finished, but I'm sure some of you would like to see a comparison of boot times between the traditional disk and the SSD, so here's a section where I'll show you just that. Right, now by the magic of filmmaking, I'm going to boot the machine before and after its upgrade. So here you're seeing the pre-upgraded machine on the left and the upgraded machine on the right. Both are trying to get into Windows, of course they'll take slightly different periods of time. Um, you might notice that on the machine, pre its upgrade, there's still lots of plastic on the screen, it looks slightly differently. That's because I actually upgraded the machine also with a matte screen protector and I still had all the covers on before I did that. Anyway, the machine with the upgrade is now getting towards having booted. Oh yes, it's just about there. I don't know what the clock will say, but I think it's going to be about um, 30 something seconds. And we'll now have to wait a little bit of time for the machine on the other side to, uh, to catch up with it, which of course is its want. And there we are, the other machine has now booted as well. And so you can see there the performance difference, the performance improvement we've achieved by fitting an SSD. Final thing I'd like to try and show you is power. Of course, it's very difficult to compare um, power usage on, on a machine because it depends on what you're doing with it at the time. But if I try and show you here uh, on two machines or the same machine before and after the upgrade, which have just been doing a little bit of light surfing following a recharge, we should see the difference in the battery life potentially available. A few videos back, I talked about Intel's new specification for lightweight, thin, portable computers known as Ultrabooks. Hopefully in this video, I've not just demonstrated how to fit an SSD into a laptop or netbook, but how you can take a fairly low cost netbook computer like this one, upgrade it with an SSD and come close to Ultrabook specification. Okay, I can hear some of you screaming at the screen already. This doesn't have anywhere near the processor power of an Ultrabook and you're absolutely right. However, for under half the price, you do end up with a machine that only weighs about 1.2 kilograms, that boots from its SSD in about 35 seconds as we've seen. That is pretty thin. This thing comes out at 24 millimeters thick when it's actually closed. Um, and you've also got your full size keyboard and an 11.6 inch screen. In terms of connectivity, this also competes very well with most Ultrabooks as you've got a full size VGA socket, full size Ethernet connector, full size HDMI port, uh, USB 3 port, uh, two USB 2 ports, uh, audio jacks and a power jack as you would expect, and underneath 
a full size, full insert SD card reader. And you won't find one of those on any 11.6 inch Ultrabook. So, to my mind, this is a good example of how if you shop around, you can take a fairly standard piece of technology, add a bit to it, and end up with a very good uh, piece of value for money in terms of portable computing. Okay, some of you may agree with you, me, some of you may disagree with me. Either way, why not leave a comment or have the argument below in, in the comment section. But for now, that's my upgrade over, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.